welcome. Love from love, hope from hope, peace from peace. I am a Christian apologist. I am an Islamic apologist. And I am a, a Jewish apologist. And I make no apologies for this. Uh, the force to restore balance to the universe uh, of Star Wars imagination. Uh, the real thing has been foretold by one who would come and restore all things. Now, unfortunately, that means change because we got to turn back the clocks and we got to look at how it used to be and look at the roots. Muhammad predicted that there would be distortionalities that would be removed in the day of the restoration of all things. That's the purpose of the Mahdi. And uh, some things are just a no-brainer. For example, um, uh, almost all Christians on earth are totally delusional and they believe that every knee is going to bow at the name of Jesus. Every tongue is going to confess the name of Jesus. Not the name of Isa, not the name of uh, Christ, but the name, and that is Pupukaka. <laughs> uh, that name did not even come about until almost a thousand years later. Muhammad never ever heard the name of Jesus. Not once. When they called our master, they said, Yeshua, dinner time, Yeshua, Yeshua. That's the only name he ever heard. Jesus and Jehovah was a derivative, a translation from in Latin uh, from the roots of Hebrew, uh, Yahweh and Yeshua. And a thousand years later, it finally became Jesus and Jehovah. So it was never the name of Jesus. What is the name that which every knee in this world will bow to? every tongue will confess it is the name of love uh first john 4 7 those who love are born again of him and know him because he is love that is restoration so what does the restoration of all things mean that isa yeshua jesus said elijah would do it's by his word it's to look at the roots of his word which are foretold to open again and uh, it, on the great white cloud, the everlasting gospel comes again to be published. That is why the Bible says, and this will be considered in the latter days, Jeremiah 30, 24 says so, because it predicts that God is saying now, in the latter days, he's saying, I will return my terrifying anger. Stop the rising tribulation everything in the book of Revelation conditional if my people will give me the uh, desire of his heart and that is for peace and love in the brotherhood of man that's why he would arise as the good shepherd over all the flock so but the 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 thing is people we we miss the forest for the trees um, and so all things being restored means it has to be as it was in the beginning and understanding of all things is evolution for example true no uh, Darwin publicly recanted it and said it was ridiculous that those are his words uh, Google uh, images of Paluxy P U L I X I E tracks and you will see dinosaur track uh, and people track right on top Google images of T-Rex blood cell and you will see the blood cells of the T-Rex in the vein. T uh, Google um, Marco Polo describes T-Rex and you're gonna get a very great uh, description from Marco Polo, it'll come right up. That's restoration. And so is the earth old or new? It's both, it was made ancient with very great age, said the book of Enoch. Uh, is there any hope? Yes, because the Lord is saying, I will return my terrifying anger, which means prophecy is not told to tell the future, but to change the future, just like uh, Jonah 3 proves. Jonah was told, go tell them none of it was going to be destroyed, and God did not. He relented because there was an if there. And all the whole great tribulation, there is an if. If the hearts of the fathers turn to the children, children turn to the fathers, then the, this world will not be hurt with a curse because if is a conditional word and so that's restoration 
Uh, are we locked into doomsday? No, because if we give him the what he prayed for in Gethsemane, whether you believe in that or not, it doesn't even matter. And I, I prove that uh, because many are going to say, Lord, Lord, uh, I believe. And he's going to say, I don't even know you. That's restoration. So it's not in belief. It's in uh, our heart. And that's why the Bible literally says those who love are born of God and know him because God is love. That is his name. That is the name to which every knee will bow and every tongue will confess, not the name of Jesus. That name was written by an apostle. Who wrote the name of Jesus? Some scribe? Nobody knows. Nobody, absolutely no one. It was not an apostle. It was not Muhammad. Uh, and Muhammad never heard the name of Jesus. So there is a one falsity right there. Uh, and it, it's it's a big one. And uh, Christians will go down fighting like a tiger. No, it's going to be the name of Jesus. No, 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 no. Restoration. See, the Muslims have always insisted that there has been corruption in the word of God and things have got twisted. And that is exactly why Muhammad said a, a book is coming that's going to prove God's mercy in the Hadith. He says, all my people will be called by another that will be sound like Islam, but it will be Chrislam, Israel's brand new name uh, that God has given them. That is restoration. And um, why did he give uh, them a new name? Because he's given their kingdom age covenant. Uh, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it. I'll write my law and my love on your heart. Beyond there, no one will ever need to be taught of me. For all the Lord shall know me everyone shall know me because I am the Lord God of all mankind that is restoration that is what the Bible says I am the Lord God of all mankind so it's ridiculous for someone like David Wood to be pointing at uh, Islam oh you're you, you got a different God no there's only one God and he's the Lord God of them 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 he's never been a God of favoritism uh, not a respecter of men so that is restoration um, who are we? The Bible predicts that uh, all of creation has been groaning with great expectation for that revelation. Who are we? Angels in the flesh. In the flesh. Uh, that is what Jesus said. He said in John 10, we're gods. The Bible says we're going to be as the angels, neither male nor female. And all of creation has been groaning for, with great uh, expectation for this revelation people that's restoration and that's manifestation of prophecy so every knee and every tongue will confess not the name of Isa not the name of uh, uh, Jesus it will be the name of love that is restoration and what does this restoration in, in, in mean it means the wheat and the tares cannot grow together because the truth is the church would not let Jesus preach his message. That is absolutely true. Isa, the word, could not preach his message in any Christian church uh, because they teach opposite to what he taught. And so uh, these are the days of the great restoration of Acts 3.21. This is restoration. And that restoration says that Christ is kept in reserve in heaven, can't even return until... Uh, this restoration happens. And what restoration is it? It's the message of Malachi 3.1 that prepares the Lord's way, Isa's way. So this, this needs to be uh, not ignored, people. This is important. Um, and it, will there be any faith on earth before he comes? I found no faith on earth about prophecy at all. Everybody is brain dead about prophecy, but it's the most important thing in the Bible because it's the fullest revelation of the Lord Lord Isa's love for Chrislam, or for Islam, for Chrislam, for uh, Judaism, for Christianity, for all of us. We are one Abrahamic faith, and we got to stop arguing with each other. So change means going back to the roots, so as it would be at the beginning. And Muhammad said that when this happened, it would remove the distortionality. Um, the Bible clearly says in 1 Corinthians that we're on, we've only been looking through a glass darkly, only knowing in part, only seeing in part. That's restoration because right from the beginning, uh, the Lord God has let us know that we've always had something distortional about our faith and it's all been love-centered. And uh, so 
Um, this is restoration to bring forth the everlasting gospel spoken and foretold in Revelation 14. I have written it. It sounds just like Moses. Restoration knowledge that you can't even talk prophecy unless you understand that the first is last and the last is first. A new Jerusalem has now been uh, revealed. Just Google New Jerusalem, NASA. You'll see how about telescope pictures of the celestial city. It's gorgeous. Check it out. I'd show you a picture, but take my word for it. Um, uh, the seventh trumpet of the apocalypse sounded first because the first is last, the last is first, and then all nations immediately became the Lord's because they've always been as is. I am the Lord God of all mankind. This is restorational. And uh, so you want to know about heaven, heaven on earth, restorational knowledge of the new Jerusalem coming forth right now. Hell, hell has been locked. God can't uh, judge, is not uh, going to judge the fallen angels before us. He has given it unto mankind for us to judge because we are angels in the flesh. If he judged us, uh, then he would be a liar. He would be a re respecter of his own creation. So this is fundamental and foundational uh, because our God is a Lord God of equality. And about sin, uh, Jesus taught that all sin is forgiven except unforgivable sin, but it was left vague. What is that unforgivable sin? It's love. It's always been love. Jesus said, you, about born again, you can't even tell which way the wind blows. you got to be as a little child uh, with your love alive in motion as a verb moving, unconditional as a little child. And it, we need to have that kind of love. But we end up in the land of the walking dead, of just having a form of godliness, uh, but, but denying the power of love that is Christ within us, that is God within us. If you don't like the word Christ, that it, use the word God. It doesn't matter what we believe. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. That's fu fundamental. Uh, and it is of no importance of our understanding is it's not about what we've done for him. It's what he has done for us. So salvation is guaranteed for all people. And in these days, Israel has received the name Chrislam because they have inherited all mankind. Isaiah 54, 3, that is foundational. Uh, prophecy being conditional means it can be reversed. So if the hearts of the fathers turn to the children, and how is that going to happen? Through the everlasting covenant, I will be your God. You will be my people. You see, that covenant was never given, and it was foretold to be given in the latter days. It says so. Jeremiah 31, 1. It promised Israel, not, not uh, uh, spiritual Israel, Christianity. That's always been a farce. Um, it promised Israel that in the, that day, when they get their covenant, because it would be given by Elijah in the latter days. Um, and the Shiloh of Genesis 49, 12, whose eyes are red and dull of wine, the alcoholic brainer uh, transgressed by wine, souls not upright, but the just will live by my faith of Habakkuk 2, bringing the vision of God. And I'm passing the torch to Chrislam, and it's up to you guys to obey uh, Ma Ma Muhammad. He said, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand upon uh, all revelation coming to you from the Lord and the law and the gospel. Paul said concerning uh, prophecy, it must be inspected most carefully and all that's good. Embrace people will not even look at it. Christians are brain dead. They will not listen to this message. Uh, so I'm counting on my Islamic brethren to wake some people up because what the world is waiting for is the uh, uh, foundational understanding that will come of love through uh, the 144,000 sealed Jews that are going to preach the message of love like it has never been preached. But they got to get their wicks uh, lit. And it's going to happen through this ministry. I'm just looking for my glasses. I, I hope you like m many here. She, my friend, I got her a nice jewel here the other day. And uh, she's never going to let go of the crescent moon because the glory of the Lord's latter house is greater than that of the form of the glory of of Islam because they will submit uh, unto prophecy whereas the Christians will not and so the truth is that the first is last and the last is first these guys are ahead of Christianity because of their submission all the world you don't have to be a Muslim you have to understand 
You simply have to be submissive to God's will to be wanting to be obedient unto him. And nothing is more important than being obedient unto the spirit of love and the spirit of prophecy, the revelation thereof. So if you're not heeding prophecy and you're unwilling to change and you will not beat your sword into the sickle because the sword of the spirit has now been retired, I am the writer of the everlasting gospel, the sickle of his word. And it was foretold in Amos 9 to be the plumb line for the great restoration so that we could have days of the great refreshing days of the restitution of earth so that money from all over this world will come in as Isaiah 60 and 61 foretells to make this world as Eden in front of us. The rich people of the world are going to realize that if they don't join in that none of us are going to make it through. So we need to swim or sink all together. So these are the days when I lost my glasses, though. Bear with me one more second. I thought I had it here. I'm just an old guy. Well, I don't see him, so I'm going to try to... Oh, wait a second. Is that them? No. What do you know? Um, so maybe I'm just going to pause, everybody. I'll be right back. Yep, yep, yep. Welcome. Welcome back. Glad to be back. I found my love monkey. Yay! And poor Minnie fall down. See, when you're live, it's like Murphy's Law. If it can't go wrong, it will. It does sometimes. But praise God, the Lord has solutions and he has a way to restore the force of love in this world so that we can all just plain start Getting along would be a good idea, but if the world doesn't recognize the restoration that I'm doing, it has no, uh, it has absolutely no, um, how you say, no, no discernment at all. The world should be looking with the restoration of all things, change, and that's exactly what it does not want. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the best spoken individuals on YouTube and no one wants to give me the part time of the day because nobody wants to change. They want to keep this decrepit, falling down, uh, sad sack world where religion is dead on planet Earth. No one wants to talk about religion. It's time to talk about loving spirituality. This is the result of the change. Uh, these are the days of the trial of all flesh, COVID, the distress of Daniel 12, same thing. As never has there been since the time before nations first began. This is a global time of distress, the pandemic. Trial of all flesh has come to bring us change, uh, to, to bring God's word of patience, to caution us, to keep us from the hour of the temptation, not to change. Not to beat our swords of our prior understandings of love into the sickle thereof. So people like David Wood, I love the guy, and uh, he's a brilliant man. But he's in your face calling uh, uh, the angel that introduced uh, Muhammad to the Quran. Uh, he calls him Satan. People. What kind of hypocrite do you got to be not to look at the 99 names of our beloved love of the ages and not to be able to say that he is the concealer of sins? He, he promises never to remember them. He says, I will be your God. You will be my forgiver. Uh, <laughs> he says, I will forgive your iniquity. I will never remember it. Uh, this is what he's saying over absolutely all mankind. So David Wood is out there tearing up uh, uh, defenseless people uh, with his uh, overpowering, in-your-face, bad attitude, condemnation, creating a world of spiritual racists and bigots, uh, people that will turn around and hate Islamics. Uh, because of just bad information, ignorance. There has never been any darkness darker than the gross darkness of ignorance alone. So it's time that we need to turn the page. So know, therefore, that options range widely about who and what uh, Jesus Christ was and what his name was. Isa, Yeshua, Jesus, there's many names. Just as there are many names for Elijah. Um, Elijah in the Bible is the Latter-day Daniel, that's my name. 
Uh, the name is Shiloh in Genesis 49, 12, one whose eyes are red and dull. Uh, that was never Jesus. He wasn't a drinker. Um, his name is Israel. He's called Israel, uh, a name in uh, Isaiah. Uh, he's called Joshua in um, Zechariah 3, 4 and 5. Zechariah 3, he picks an alcoholic. Zechariah 4, he lights one candlestick, not two. Uh, and then comes the uh, flying scroll, the everlasting gospel, line by line, precept by precept, would a rider come forth uh, as a destroying storm. Why? Because I have restoration, uh, and no one has given me the time of the day. And this is the only thing that is going to save this earth, because we got days as Noah, and there's no difference between me and Noah. Uh, Noah spent many years, I've spent 20 years uh, writing a, a, this what I'm reading, this everlasting gospel and flying scroll, and no one wants to hear it. I, I, I wrote 20 years. I've done everything in vain, Isaiah 49, 4, because people will not believe prophecy. And even though that everything I'm saying would bring the kingdom age, people do not want to believe it. They want their decrepit, twisted, obsolete uh, uh, religion. And that is what Christianity is. It's obsolete, Hebrews 8, because the words, uh, as uh, Paul foretold, have come. They have been given to the world. I will be your God. You will be my people. And Paul says the obsolete. In the same way Muhammad said, and there'll be no more left of the Quran except its outward form when that happens because of the book proving God's mercy. And he knew that prophecy was behind him, not in front of him. So praise the Lord. And so uh, know that in the uh, first century, huge throngs of listeners uh, followed Isa, Yeshua, Jesus, in every city, and the awe, total awe of the powerful miracles that he performed and the words that he spoke. Demons were cast out, people raised from the dead, food was multiplied, people were healed, myths were shattered, lives were changed. The fluttering of the Holy Spirit was all over there. And uh, the dove of love and the mighty eagle of the regal now are flying together, soaring higher than ever before. And throughout the centuries following thousands of books, stories, television, documentaries, films, even uh, many novels have been written and produced about uh, Jesus Christ, some totally not true, like the Da Vinci Codes, just fictional. And there's been hundreds and hundreds of churches and mosques and temples have been proclaimed. Millions claim to be the master uh, ministers of his word. Uh, billions, billions of people have proclaimed him savior. And yet today, the Lord Jesus, renowned, renowned all over the world, commonly known in one way or another in every culture of the world, whether one pro professes to be uh, a Christian, an atheist, or of any other religion, most people have heard about Jesus. And many have po positive comments about him, even if they are other religions. But regardless uh, of their beliefs, uh, about who he was and what he taught. His name also has always stirred great controversy. And Christians are convinced that it will only be the name of Jesus. And they're anal retentive about that. And yet the name of Jesus did not come back uh, and be printed for the first time. Uh, it was in the 1800s, early 1700s, all right. But 1700s, the name of Jesus was never in print. Uh, so it's it's a fallacy that they're believing his name that all people will bow down to is love, and yet in in spite of worldwide uh, recognition, despite billions of people professing even to be his followers, uh, despite uh, all the prophecy about Elijah, uh, no one wants to give me the time of day, uh, and they, there is no faith in this world for the end time. Uh, foretelling that before he can return, Elijah would come first and restore all things. And by the way, it's a totally different Elijah. The Elijah of Revelation 11, the two witnesses, are two candlesticks, not one. It's a whole different vision. And the power thereof is the power of the two because they've been resurrected. The original Moses, the original Elijah, and the only death will rock and roll this world then. But people now have a chance to choose life first. It is written in the latter days. 
this will be considered Jeremiah 30, 24, and it better, or we have nothing but days as Noah, and it's the total destruction of the world, annihilation, no birds, no fish, no man, Zephaniah 1, 1, the earth in four, three, four pieces, Isaiah 24, uh, only death would be ahead of Shiloh, Genesis 49, 12, uh, says uh, Deuteronomy 18, 18, one like Moses, I lead all the wheat out from the tares, they can't grow together anymore another exodus uh, I am the kingdom age covenant lawgiver of love and I am the I am the kingdom age writer God has never done anything important in this world unless he first sent forth a writer so many have accepted without question what they've heard read or taught throughout their lives about Christ uh, and these same people they will vigorously defend their beliefs uh, while feeling no need to examine any proof of why they believe what they do. Why is every name going to bow at the name of Jesus? Why that name? They don't question it. They're like sheep. God doesn't want no more stupid sheep. He wants uh, a pride of lions. That is the name of a family of lions. And it's time for the eagle to tear up all distortional realities of, of false religion in this world so that people can give, get along. Uh, Christianity, how judgment begins on the house of God because they're born again. Uh, uh, truth has never been true. Uh, it's never been, even Jesus said, you can't even tell which way the wind blows. And yet they went and defined it. They leaned onto their own understanding when all along it's been of the heart alone. So, uh, they people they defend without proof and so they won't even consider how that they came to their beliefs originally uh they put it to the back of the bus and they just know they're right and it's baseless uh so human nature it follows the crowd uh it follows that which is popular and uh so that has been the case virtually with every widely accepted teaching, traditions, practices of mainstream Christianity. That is why I am a Christian apologist, uh, to, to, to bring as many holes into it, to sink it to the bottom, because I am as the destroying storm of Isaiah 28, line by line, precept by precept, because I have the appointment of Jeremiah 1.10 and Haggai 2.2 2, that God wants to destroy uh, all unloving religiosity, all closed-minded, closed-hearted religiosity, and a rise of loving spirituality across the board. The prophetess Baba Vanga, uh, uh, a seer, she said, all religion on earth is going to crumble, and what will take its place? It'll be a brotherhood of love. Uh, it'll be like uh, all over the circle of earth, lily of the valley and rose of Sharon covering this world, and it will be the golden age. So praise God. So ask yourself, what is your view of Isa? What is your view of Jesus? Because um, there's been distortions in both religions, uh, Islam as well. And David Wood has been right about uh, some. <laughs> He's been dead wrong about uh, the praise. No, who could deny that that is our Lord? He is the beneficent. He is the concealer of sin. And uh, I've been throwing lots of shit pies at David Wood. I love you, David, if you ever watch this. But uh, the guy, he he will not debate me. And he just dismisses me, ignores me. Well, you know what? An apologist is not supposed to ignore uh, truth. Uh, so I don't apologize for being a little, I'm tired of I'm tired. I'm 60 years old. I've made 7,000 videos now, and nobody will give me the time of the day. No one will give me one like or a comment. No one wants to subscribe. It's I'm preaching all the time just to dead space. But praise God that uh, Noah built the ark for no one that wanted to ride. And I'm doing the same thing. Uh, the trees that I'm planting, I may never see anyone sitting under the beautiful shade of the tree of life that's going to arise over them. But I have built the latter-day mountain of Isaiah 2, Micah 4, which is the latter-day mountain of the spiritual food of God found at Isaiah 25. 
and that is the marriage supper of the Lamb for the living church made up of loving people from all religions or none. It's never been about what we believe. It's about uh, walking in the spirit of love. If you walk with the spirit of love, there is no condemnation over you. And so praise God that, you know, um, restoration needs to be understood that God did not destroy mankind because he hated them. The real reason it was cloaked, it was covered, there was giganticism. Uh, look back, Google giant mammals uh, uh, and giant reptiles. God did not make that uh, carnivorous uh, uh, creation. It was all peaceful. God said to the original creation, be fruitful, multiply, replenish. But he said, and the leaves of your, the trees will be as your meat. And so there was no, uh, he, he never created dinosaurs. That was a satanic influence called it an Iblis, whatever you want. But in this hour, he has been removed because he, Iblis, Satan would have made God a liar. You see, the truth is day and night, he's been before the Lord accusing us. And uh, how could God honestly say to us, I, I will forgive your iniquity and never remember it. If Satan's there, oh, did you hear about that guy, Daniel? Oh, he was bad. And so Daniel 12, 1, for 1,000 years, he had to be removed by Michael the Archangel. And so know that you need to ask yourself then who you think he is. And uh, whether or not you believe he was resurrected or not is of no importance. Now, technically, um, Muhammad was right. Allah has no sons. Jesus was not a son of God. He was fully God in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us. There's been confusion about the Trinity, too. I'll help you out. Uh, mercury is mercury, whether it's in one spot or three or four pieces. And as you know, mercury absorbs and it, next thing you know, it's one piece. But when it's separate in five little balls, it's mercury. And when it, you put it back all in one little ball of mercury, it's mercury. In between, it's mercury. So too is the singularity of the multiplicity of the trinity of one. I dare you to say that three times fast. I am the restorer of the revelator of the end days. And within a time, times and a half a time, religion on earth is going to fall down because of my videos. That's why I've got 7,000 now and I've only been doing this a year and a half. I don't, I, I'm not out for a race or anything, but I'm, I'm broadcasting the truth that no one wants to uh, hear. But it's time that we do if we want, uh, if, if we want to get ahead. So ask yourself, what does the image of Christ provoke and evoke within you. Perhaps you picture a weak, long-haired, sickly-looking man in a flowing white robe, or maybe you're thinking of the baby Jesus in a manger uh, with the three wise men giving him gifts, uh, or you might think of a figure uh, in a loincloth hanging from a cross, or you might think that he was hidden. You might think this. You might think about uh, Easter eggs and sunrise services might come to mind, or Christmas season. But you might also envision Christ standing on a street corner pleading with people to give their hearts to him, to, to, to let their love flow for all people around them. And so perhaps you hear him saying, love is everything. Uh, show love to all people and accept me as love. Perhaps you hear that because he says the joy is an inside job. Open your heart and he will come in and help you to be a more loving person. Or you might also just picture Jesus walking.